I will just mention quickly, I know that uh, this has probably been done a couple of times uh, so far today, but <clears throat> trading, specifically uh, futures, options, Forex, et cetera, uh, involves a lot of risk, and you should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances, knowledge, and financial resources. You may lose all or more of your initial investment. It's important. I know you read that all the time, but we're talking about a very highly leveraged business. And uh, you know you've got to uh, you have to have your eyes open and be fully aware and informed about the business that you're getting into. So please take a second to read that disclaimer. It's also available on our website. <coughs> uh, this slide is blank. Let's go to the next one. A little bit about me, just really briefly. I don't like to talk about myself. I prefer to talk about the markets, but that is me, cover of Traders Mag, back in I think it was 2008, 2009. Um, still very proud of it, so I put it up there whenever I can. Been trading since 1992, and then roughly about 10 years after my uh, my own trading career, um, I started a, an education firm called the Trading Zone in 2003, and that's where I spend the majority of my time now is working with our traders in the daily chat room, introducing them to our methodology, <clears throat> walking them through uh, trade setups, educating, etc. So if you're looking for me. Go to thetradingzone.com and log into our chat room, and that's where you'll find me and my um, extremely dedicated and capable staff helping traders um, all day long. That's since 2003, so we've been doing this for a very long time. What am I going to talk about today? <clears throat> um, what am I going to talk about? Well, it's interesting because you just finished uh, a really nice presentation with Jim over at Infinity about market profile, and this is a really nice. It kind of was a nice introduction because I'm going to show you on a more um, direct application level how to use market profile. A lot of people talk and use market profile in a theoretical sense, and you kind of lose that, that you know, how do I use it, right? What is, what, how am I actually going to find a trade using this? Those overly complicated. What I'm going to do, for lack of a better term, I'm going to really dumb it down and show you what it looks like on your chart, how to find trades, why it works, why it doesn't, where it works, where it doesn't, and all of that overly complex stuff that you may have been introduced to in the past market profile, we're going to kind of leave that behind, and we're going to focus on some of the really easy to follow, interesting stuff, and I promise you, the hour will be well spent, your eyes will open up to something new, something about yourself and your trading. Before I do that, though, I'd like to just talk about a couple of things that I think are really important when we... Uh, considering consider trading generally as a career, as a job, as a part-time job. And this is, um, you know, I go back, I, I've been working with traders for, for well over a decade. So I've worked with hundreds, maybe thousands, I don't know. We have 250 people on a regular uh, daily basis in our chat room. It's a lot of traders that I've worked with over the years. And I guess the questions that come in about how do I become successful? How do I become consistently successful? You know, how come one person's using the same method? We're all using the same indicators, and you know, ninety percent of us are trading through the same systems, charting platforms, domes, etc. Then why, if we're all using the same stuff, is somebody making money and somebody not making money? And in my experience, it really comes down to two things that are separated in the boxes on the screen. There is number one, the mechanics of trading. The mechanics of trading are easily taught. Uh, I will say that when my son, who's now 15, when he was eight years old, I taught him how to trade. Because the mechanics of trading are about pattern recognition. It's, it's just a, a visual game, and you practice it, and you learn it, and you do it over and over again. And that's really what trading is about. The whole reason we use charts is that human beings tend to act the same way given the same set of circumstances, right? So as an example, if somebody were to raise their hand quickly in the front of your face, you would flinch. You'd move your head back. And if they did it to you again, you would, you'd move your head back again. And even though you knew they weren't going to hit you because um, they, you know, they were just messing with you, you you'd c continue to have the same reaction. Now, take that event and take a group of hundreds of thousands of people and put them in the same room or trading the same market and give them the same circumstance and what you'll see is they'll react the same way over and over again. 
So what that means is when we, when we map that, when we take a graphic image of how people react in a situation, we call that a chart pattern. And the charts that we use are nothing more than that. They are just mapping out how human beings react in specific situations. And this is the mechanics of trading. So it comes down to technical analysis using certain tools, uh, chart reading, using your indicators, understanding the information on the dome, <clears throat> um, time in sales, using trends, etc. cetera. Um, the human element is a little bit more complicated. And this comes down to, you know, how come some traders are successful and others aren't? And the reality is, as, as, as human beings, as people, as the person behind the, the mouse having to click and make the trade, you then have to learn more about yourself. You have to reveal your strengths and weaknesses on a personal level, right? And that means digging into your psychology, understanding that ultimately every trader is different. And then you have to plan your trading business accordingly. In other words, the trades that fit right for you, the ones that work f for you, the ones that um, you can place. Just because somebody's putting on a certain trade doesn't mean that you'll be able to do it the same. You may find that it's outside of your comfort zone. So a lot of trading comes down to bridging or merging these two boxes, taking the mechanics of trading, <clears throat> which is a teachable and learnable thing, and then working over and over again in a feedback loop to experiment, learn about yourself, learn a little bit more about yourself, keep the necessary documentation, and use that to further the knowledge about yourself as a trader. It doesn't change the mechanics of trading. <clears throat> um, Jeff saying, and yet, didn't you struggle to succeed at the trading part and hence became an educator? Uh, actually, no, that's, that's, uh, that would be inaccurate. I, um, I actually was one of the few uh, reverse stories. I had very early success in my trading, well before the days of, of day trading, when I was a, a, uh, um, a currency swing trader. And in actuality, um, the education business was some kind of just came upon on itself. And we actually ran a very, very small education business until a couple of years ago. But you know, if you want to discuss that at, at, at greater lengths, I'll be happy to. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you this. Um, if you want to add a lot of anxiety and stress to your trade, put, your, put your, your trade out there every day in a public environment in a chat room for 10 years, not for 10 days or 10 months. Uh, it's actually 11 years now. That, that'll definitely increase the, uh, the level of the stress and anxiety. Once again, we'll move forward with the presentation and we can talk more about that later. I'm going to talk to you today about the co three cores of the trading zone. Now, you may notice that I have one, two, three, four boxes here, and yet I talk about three cores. And, and this goes back to the prior slide, and I'll explain why. Cores one, two, and three, market profile, pattern and inflection points, price action, and order flow. These are the mechanics. I've heard this before, but um, you know, an effective trading system starts from the broad and then moves to the narrow, right? So the broad is market profile. A broad approach is looking at uh, a roadmap of the market, where the market is likely to start being active in the probable destination of the market. In other words, the journey the market is likely to take. It could be trending, non-trending, structured long, structured short. <coughs> information the market profile gives us. And I know that you touched on it a little bit in the prior presentation. We're going to dig into it a little bit more, but actually simplify it. And then there's the medium term uh, information about the market. And that comes down to patterns and inflection points. So I guess one of the analogies I like to use is if I'm going to drive from, uh, you know, from, from New York to Chicago, I need, a, I need a map to get there, right? I know I'm heading west. But that's, that's the market profile. That's the big picture. The patterns and recognition, that tells me specifically, well, you know, what, what road am I going to take? What, am, what, what exit do I need to get off at? Where am I going to stop to refuel? Right? Those are the actual locations on a chart that tell us there are some spots on the chart that are preferential to take trades because we anticipate greater activity from other traders. We want that as, as, as traders. Um, 
And then there are other parts on the chart where we don't want to take trades because we anticipate there being low activity or what people call congestion or chop zones, right? So that's the, the, the medium time frame, price patterns uh, and inflection points. Now we're ready to actually take a trade. So market profile, let's say, has determined the market is structured long. We're going to look for a pattern and a location where long is appropriate. And now we're going to look to confirm that entry with the the instantaneous energy of the market. So this third core says, even though this is the direction I want to trade in, and even though I found the right spot and the nice pattern to participate in, what I now need to know is, does the market have energy, momentum, uh, order flow in the direction of my trade? One of the big things about technical analysis is it is not a prediction tool. It is a measurement tool, and that's a huge differentiation. What I'm going to use my price action for is I'm going to measure what's actually happening in the market, and I'm going to decide whether or not to participate. I'm not going to predict that buyers are going to come in. I'm going to measure that they're actually there, and I'm either going to decide to participate or not. I'm either going to accept that the flow is in the direction of my trade, or I'm going to filter out that trade, or maybe I'll fade it if it's going the other way. So these are cores one, two, and three that make up um, the, the, the bulk of the trading zone system. Next is money management. And you'll notice that I'll call them, I call them cores one, two, and three, and then I leave money management as the fourth element. So why would I have three cores plus money management? And the reason for that is the following. Numbers one, two, and three do not change based on you, the trader. Market profile, patterns, and price action are what we call market-generated information. The market profile is not going to change if you're a one lot, a five lot, or a 10 lot trader. right? The locations on the chart do not change whether you are a counter trend or a trend trader. Those remain the same. So one, two, and three are generated from the market. This is market-generated information. Now we lock, jump over to number four, money management, and that says, well, what are you going to do? You personally as a trader, how are you going to manage the situation? And one of the things that is crystal clear when you've worked with you know, dozens or hundreds or thousands of traders over the years is that no two traders are the same. As much as I can tell you, listen, the market is, according to the system, according to the methodology, the market wants to go from this price level to that price level. You should hold this trade because blah, blah, blah. Uh, whatever, if you don't have the money management skills, uh, the risk uh, management skills, the proper account size, then you'll never stick with that trade. You will do what feels right for you based on your own money management approach. In other words, <clears throat> uh, In other words, money management is directly related to your own personal psychology, right? Your own beliefs about whether or not this trade is likely to make money or to lose money. And we encourage and we teach is learn the mechanics of trading first, because of course you need to understand the mechanics of it, and then set aside some time to learn about yourself and apply the money management system that works best for you. So we don't offer one money management system. We say, listen, the, the trade setups are always going to be the same. But you may be at a, a stage financially, personally, psychologically, where you're going to get out, at, out at the first target because you need to build your confidence and know that for a high percentage uh, trade, this is going to work you know, 75, 80% of the time. And then you may graduate and say, well, now I'm prepared to stay in this trade a little bit longer. What can I do to manage that consistent with my own psychology? And those, the answer to that may be, well, I want to add an extra contract. So now you're increasing risk, but that may be okay for you. Or I want to start using a trailing stop. So now you have a slight increase in risk. However, you're risking money. Right? So there's different approaches. So that's why when I, when I talk about these three cores, I do one, two, three, plus four. Because I want everybody to understand the way you're going to approach your trading, um, numbers one, two, and three will not change. Number four will change. And number four is based on what I call this window. Right? You can see how I kind of 
got creative here with my system. I made this overlay. Um, this number four is greatly dependent on developing a positive trader psychology. And we have a number of tools that we walk you through. Because again, my belief is the following. The mechanics of trading, right, three, four days, we'll teach it to you, you'll learn it. It doesn't mean you're going to become a great trader until you can mesh that with your own ability from a psychological perspective. Now, a lot of people say that, but that's where they fall short. What we do is we actually use a number of tools focused on the psychology to say the, the mechanics. Yes? Okay. Now let's talk about um, finding your strengths, identifying your weaknesses, right? identifying those in a, in, a, in a proper manner, using a feedback loop so that you can reinforce what works and you can avoid what doesn't work, doing that over and over again, and then grow into a money management system that feels comfortable. So the first week you could be taking one contract for five ticks. Now you're not going to you know, make a fortune on that, but you're going to be comfortable with it. <laughs> you're going to grow into it. And again, it's not going to change cores one, two, and three, but it is going to allow you to grow as a trader as you develop this um, greater psychology. What I'm going to talk about today, that having been said, I'm going to talk about market profile. I didn't know actually that Jim was coming in <clears throat> and talking about market profile this morning. But I, I guess actually it's a good thing because I will show you um, on, on his coattails that market profile can be as complex and complicated as you want or as simple and easy. And one of the things I believe in is easy and I'm going to just touch a little bit. You'll see one or two of my slides are going to look like his and then it's going to be dramatically easier because the huge belief I have about trading is as good as a system is, if it is not easy to learn and easy to recognize in a real-time environment, um, then it will serve you no, no purpose, right? If you can't execute because there's too many things to look at, too many indicators on the chart, and as good as, good as the thing may backtest, it's not going to do anything for you. You're probably going to fumble, um, make mistakes, and it's going to cost you money, even though, you know, on its own, the system may be great. But if you can't use it, uh, and, and I think we've all been there. I mean, certainly I've been there. I've looked at overcomplicated stuff, and I always retreat back to what I find is the simplest. So this is as complicated. This is the most complicated slide. So don't don't get scared. Don't leave. <laughs> this is as complicated as it's going to get. <clears throat> After this, it's way easier. And I'm just repeating here what uh, Jim already told you. So basically, market profile is an indicator <coughs> that may look and feel different than something you've used in the past, right? But I'm going to make it really easy for you. So we take all the data that accumulated during a particular trading day. From the start of the day to the end of the day, we take all the data and we lay it on a vertical distribution curve. That's all you need to know. Don't get any more complicated than that. I know he walked you through um, what these TPO blocks are and what the letters represent. I don't need to even explain that because I rarely use them. I'm not saying it's not valid information. It is. It's extremely powerful. But in our approach to market profile, we've simply the way I like to explain it is this. I could teach you how to drive a car and get a driver's license um, without showing you how to rebuild your engine. Now, rebuilding your engine may be a great skill to have, but you don't need to learn it in order to drive a car. You don't need to learn all the um, intricacies of market profile in order to trade it. So, simply put, all the data accumulated is plotted on a vertical distribution curve. So down over here, 1,096 traded, a little a letter is dropped over here, um, up at the top. I don't see what the number is, but in any case, once all the data is accumulated and thrown into this indicator, something is going to pop out, which is a price level that traded more than all the others, right? And that's this POC, point of control. That's a price level where buyers and sellers met most frequently in order to exchange contracts. and trade. Simple as that, right? That's where they, they met the most often. 
a buyer and met a seller at this price level more often than all, all the others. That's why they call it the point of control. It's kind of like the center of gravity. It's the heavy part in the market. It's the big congestion nub where buyers and sellers met and exchanged contracts. We call that the point, point of control. From there, you don't have to do any heavy lift. This one standard deviation. I mean, you've already lost me. Don't worry about it. it basically means we're going to take 68% of the data, and we're going to draw an upper value area and a lower value area. Greg, why 68%? Because in nature, in life, um, all, over the, all across the universe, one standard deviation is the mathematical rule that says data that is inside one standard deviation is relevant. Inside one standard deviation is irrelevant data, or what they call in statistics a statistical outlier, something that's irrelevant. All right, let's bring it back to something really simple. The indicator is going to go out there. It's going to do some work for you. it's going to drop some lines on your chart. Simple. Um, from, those, from those lines, you're going to have the center of gravity, point of control, upper value, and lower value area. The stuff in the middle is the statistically relevant, where traders traded the most. And the stuff outside the levels is the irrelevant, meaning they traded there very infrequently. So there was not a lot of acceptance of that price. That's as, as complicated it has, as it has to get drive from New York to Chicago, what's it going to look like? That's like market profile saying, well, tell me market profile, which direction is the market going in? Where, where is the market going? So I'm going to, I'm going to broaden, I'm going to take a, a step back, and I'm going to broaden my horizon, and I'm going to look at market profile over a number of days, you know, perhaps even a month. And I'm going to see how these, these pink lines is what we call the value bracket, which is basically the upper value area, the lower value. You can see the little dot in the middle of the POC, upper the lower, the dot in the middle of POC. And we can see clearly this is a market that is building value, right? Value is the area inside the pink lines, the bracket. Great question, Dave. I'll answer that in a second. One, two, three, four. So this is a market that's building value. because the value brackets are stacked one on top of the other. Do not overcomplicate. This is where I'm going to pull everything back in. This is a lot of market profile traders are going to show you stuff that looks like this. If I had to trade off of a chart that looked like this, I would cry. <laughs> I would find something else to do for a living because this to me is an interesting information, I grant you that, but not something that I can use in a real-time environment way too much information. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a chart that looks like this. This is clean, and all of a sudden you can recognize um, that, oh, yes, this is finally somebody showing me a chart with some candles. I can recognize that. Let me just answer David's question. David says, how is this different than a Bollinger Band? Of course, oh, the moving average. Average. So shouldn't that be the same as market profile? So the calculation is the same. However, here's the difference. Um, what? Let me let me ask you this, David. What setting do you use for your your Bollinger Band? Uh, what's the standard? Uh, Fourteen periods or or eighteen periods, whatever it is. Do you have a Do you have a favorite period Bollinger Band? That means your Bollinger Band is looking back eighteen candles. Right? So where the Bollinger Band um, is less meaningful is that it continuously moves with the trade. One of the core concepts behind market profile is value is determined by an entire day's worth of trading, not the last 18 or 20 candles. So when the market opens and you're using a Bollinger Band, you're looking at yesterday's information which is very different than today's. Um, if you're looking at it in a, in a chop period like this, you're looking at the last 18 profile does, is it anchors the calculation on the first bar of the day, and it accumulates all the information to the end of the day, closes out the calculation, and then starts a new calculation. So in other words, when we look at these brackets, we are, we are 
comparing one complete day versus another complete day. And then one complete day versus another complete day. We're not looking inside a small period of the day, and we're not, um, I guess, dirtying up the data by crossing over one day to another. So that would be kind of the, the, the short answer to that. There are some other intricacies, but it would take a little bit longer to explain. OK, so let's move forward. This is that chart brackets, right? But from a trader's perspective, <clears throat> um, I don't know how traders trade using a chart that looks like this. I'm accustomed to a chart that looks like this. So, so why don't we just take these levels and superimpose them onto a chart? All of a sudden, something jumps out at you, or should. Now, I can vi visually see, and again, trading is about visual recognition. I can see how the price, meaning my candles, interacts with the levels generated. By so now, everything is clear and makes sense to me. This, let me go back a slide, this, I can't use this in a real environment. Where, where do I put my trade? I don't, this is not something I can use. Even this up here, right? Even this up here, complicated. But this chart is something that traders are accustomed to using every day. And I can clearly see, and this is the beauty of market pro profile, what is the interaction between, are we accepting value, meaning moving back inside the bracket, or are we rejecting value, meaning moving away from the bracket? So one of the beauties of market profile is we can actually use these levels to trade off of, or we can use them as guides to the, what we call market structure and market direction. So that big picture that I told you about earlier, you can simply use market profile as an additional input so that you can evaluate what we call trend or structure or direction. They all mean the same thing. Or you can actually use the levels to to trade off of. You don't have to, but you can. So let's talk a little bit about what it means in terms of market structure and market direction. Right? So what, is, what can market profile tell me about market structure and market direction? So as mentioned, this is cl clearly a market that's building value. How do we know that? Um, because the brackets are so clearly it's a market that's building value. So this is not a chart that I'm going to look at all day long. I'm going to open this chart. I'm going to glance at it for about 20 seconds before the market. And I'm going to see where, where, what is the market doing? Is it building value? Is it losing value? Is it neutral? OK. Next. Here's a market that is clearly losing value. You can a point of control, which is the center, that center nub, right? The one that sticks out the furthest, and see are we generating point of controls lower than the prior one? Or you can look at the entire bracket and say, are we building brackets one below the other? So this is clearly a market that is losing value. It doesn't stop there. Here's a market that is neutral. We can clearly see that we have overlapping brackets one bracket inside another, inside another. <clears throat> so one of the beautiful things about market profile is it kind of gives you this predetermination. I'm not talking about a predicting. I'm talking about just a, a more information right at the opening bell that says, this is a market that is likely to build value. This is a like market that's li likely to lose value. Or this is a market that is structurally neutral, and it's going to go back and forth within value. Okay, Why is this important? It's important. Because the market profiles that I'm showing you um, have approximately 12 known and defined structures, which means it's a finite number of situations. A market could either be neutral, breaking out, to structured long, neutral, breaking out to structured short, neutral, remaining neutral, right? So um, 
unlike other indicators that may attempt to do the same, this gives you a defined and quantitative number of potential scenarios. Do, do pivot points show the same info? No. Pivot points are a very basic calculation that uh, makes one huge assumption that I can't get my head around. A pivot point suggests that tomorrow's trading range will be equivalent to today's trading range. It takes today's data and it extrapolates it to tomorrow, which is, as you know as a trader, tends to be the opposite, right? If you're using pivot points, you're always using today's open, high, low, close, and then you're doing your calculation to find to tomorrow's. And as we know, as traders, the market tends to do just the opposite. The market tends to move from um, expansion, two, three days of expansion, to two, three days of congestion. Market profile will show you that. It'll show you because the market will either retreat back into a bracket, so we know it's consolidating, or it'll start to move above a bracket, so we know it is expanding. With regard to trends, here's the interesting thing, Stuart. We can find um, a trend that is completely counter to the structure. Let me try to explain that. In other words, we can be trading on a very long, and you probably have seen this as, as a trader, you go and you look at your longer time frame charts, <clears throat> the trend is long, but for some reason, the market traded short all day, and all the money was made on the short side. All you would have known by using a trend line is that we are trading against the trend. But if you introduce market profile, what you'll likely find is that, and I'm going to show you actually on the charts, is that all of these levels, these inflection points, tend to act either as price ma market profile, price magnets, or price rejection areas. And, that, and you could be way uh, away from any trend uh, consideration, but the market will still gravitate towards or gravitate away from the market profile level. And why is that? We explained earlier that there are certain levels on a chart that over and over again, repeatedly, either attract uh, trader activity or don't. And the market profile levels, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of charts. Some of them are from a couple of days ago, from a couple of months, even a couple of years. And you will see the pattern will jump out at you. And this is what I think is incredibly important because if patterns and situations don't jump out the, off the chart and look so obvious, then again, you're going to have a very difficult time trading them. So they may work. I've, I haven't been able to make those work because if it's not simple and obvious, I can't make it work. I want something really... As I've explained, I want to walk into my office from the other, um, you know, other end of the room and be able to see my, my pattern setting up way ahead of time. That's what market profile does. One of the reasons is that the historical levels, the historical levels, right, the ones that are static from yesterday, the prior day, day before, they don't change throughout the day. Those historical levels are sitting and waiting for you when you open up your chart gives you a lot of time to plan and get organized. So I'm going to go through a sequence of charts now because obviously we are traders and what we like to see and what we like to look at is what, what, well, what does it look like on a chart, right? It's wonderful to talk about all these brackets and, and theory, but tell me, show me, how am I going to use this in my trading? And that's exactly what I want to show you. We have to bridge the theoretical with the practical. Like I said, I don't want to teach you how to rebuild your car engine. I want to teach you how to drive. And that's the approach that we always take. So here's a market that opened structurally long, right? We're above, above the bracket, and it retreated to test value. Doesn't take much technical analysis to see this, what we call uh, paired candles, tweezer bottoms, changing of the guard, whatever you want to call it. That's a very well-known uh, reversal pattern. Look where it happened. The other thing I'm going to mention is on most trading days, not all, obviously, markets are never that precise, on most trading days, the major move, the big move of the day is going to happen off of a market profile level. 
over and over and over again. And you know, those who are who are members of the trading zone who have been trading with me for a week, a month, a year, we have some members who have been with me for over 10 years constantly amazed, blown away by the fact that yes, day after day, boom, there it goes. The big trade and it just happened off of a market profile level. So we'll go through a number of charts and you'll see what I'm talking about. And one of the things that I'll point out is the patterns are so clear and obvious that you won't even need to, to do much uh, deeper digging. So one of the things I'll point out is what do I have on my chart? Okay, I have either a, a two or a three minute candle, basic. I have a market profile indicator, and I actually have the market profile indicator installed two times. The jagged lines is today's developing value areas, so throughout the day we're accumulating all this data, and I have yesterday's historic value areas. So I mentioned again, the value area doesn't change from yesterday to the day before, but today's is going to be developing as the day progresses. As we accumulate all the data, Today's is going to be progressing as we go. So one of the things that you should be able to see right away is look how clean and crisp these charts are. These are not, uh, you know, crowded and and overly cumbersome with 16 duplicate indicators, you know, uh, showing you the same thing. It's a very very clean chart. Here's a, a classic example of what we call a structurally neutral day. How do we know that? Well, clearly, you can see, as I showed earlier, we've got a bracket building inside a bracket. I go back to the slide four or five slides ago. This is the definition of a neutral day. So if you were looking for a trend to ignite, whatever your bias was, I'm, you know, I'm biased long and biased short, the market told you otherwise. The market told you, well, you, whatever your bias is, that's your own personal belief, but the market is never wrong. The market has said, mm, today we're going to consolidate. Well, how do I know that? because I've got a bracket building inside another bracket. The horizontal lines are yesterday's, right? So when you wake up in the morning, you turn on your chart, these fixed horizontal lines are waiting for you. They're there, they're, the levels are, are from yesterday, so they're first tick of the day, boom, there they are. You can see, uh, you know, rejection of the upper value area, you can see the trade off the um, lower value area. Etc. Right? Um, is that an inside candle? Well, the answer is at the end of the day, it will have printed an inside candle. But what I'm saying is, I don't want to wait to the end of the day. I need to know today, you know, two three candles in, whether I'm looking for a breakout, a breakdown, or neutral. Now that may have changed at some point. So I'm, I can't wait till the end of the day to see the inside candle. It will. It will. The answer is at the end of the day when I look at my daily chart, that's an inside candle, right? It didn't, didn't take out <coughs> the prior day higher low. But I got that information by, you know, by 9.32 a.m. Let's show you some more. Okay. Here's the value area, and here's the value area. We can see... Now, I'm, I'm, I'm actually limiting my charts to one particular type of setup that we use, which is, as I explained, using the value areas also as trading levels. And I'm, I'll stress again, it's only one, one of the, the multiple approaches. It's one that works beautifully. In other words, if you said, oh, Greg, I only want to learn one thing, I'll say, okay, let me show you how you're going to trade off of the levels. Right? And yes, yeah, it's true, some days the market won't go near the prior levels and you won't get a trade. So that's the trade-off. Um, you know, that's the trade-off is I want to limit what I'm doing so maybe on a day where the market is, is you know, grinding higher, uh, you won't get something. But more often than not, uh, you know, three, four days out of five, markets don't break out to new highs or lows. They tend to revisit price. Trade off the upper value area, trade off the upper value area. Does this work at Forex? Absolutely. Stocks, Forex, commodities. The concept behind market profile is, just briefly, and you'll see that it applies to any market. There is two things at work. There is price and there is value. 
price is a given, it's a number, right? Price is the last price traded, somebody bought, somebody sold, that's the price. It cannot be disputed. Market profile says, well, what is that price compared to or relative to? Is this price seen as being expensive or cheap? And that's how you know how traders are going to react to it. If it's seen as cheap, they're going to buy it. If it's seen as expensive, they're going to sell it. So again, these are one, two, three, four, five trades only off of the value areas, right? Only off of the value areas in one day. Were, the, were these the only trades to be had? No, of course not. There were other trades. I'm talking about how we can combine the levels with the knowledge of market profile. Here's an example of needing to be patient. <laughs> like I said, sometimes the market is trading away. In this particular approach, the market is trading away from a static level. What are you going to do? Um, was there a trade up here to be had? Was there a failure at the high? Yes, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking just about the value line trades. You would have had to wait until the midday, but you would have found your trades. Right, so sometimes you have to be patient. Sometimes there's only a trade or two. Sometimes there's four, five, or six. We don't know. We have to be, you know, we are at the mercy of the markets. Our job is to wait patiently for it to show up. And again, I actually I missed one over here. Right, so you'd have one, two, three trades. I'm sorry, four. Oops, silly me. <coughs> um, one, two, three, four trades off of the value area. And I'll stress again, was there another trade here to catch the low? Yes, there was. But specifically using what I'm showing you in terms of the value line trades, here they were over here, right? So I'm not, I'm not suggesting by looking at this chart, this was all there was to trade. I'm saying, how can we use market profile, our knowledge of structures of the market, structured neutral, structured long, structured short, combined with the levels that they provide us? Forex, Hind is asking, Forex is 24 hours. What is the time zone for that system? It depends which Forex you're trading. Um, I'll make the following comment. The start times and end times for market profile is very important. Okay? You don't want to use market profile on a 24-hour chart. Market profile up on uh, what we call the pit session or the most active traded session. So if you were trading the S&Ps, it would be from 9.30 until 4.15. If you're trading crude oil, it would be from 9 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. If you're trading Forex, it's a little bit more um, involved because Forex is truly a 24-hour market. But Forex has three distinct periods of the day. So you would actually build a chart for each one of those three periods. So you would build one chart for the Asian session, 8.30 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. You would build uh, a chart for the European session, which would be 3 a.m., to 8 to uh, 8 15 a.m. and then you would build um, a chart for the um, uh, you would build a chart for the U.S. session, which would be from 8 a.m. until 2:30 uh, p.m. The CL is I'm always talking in Eastern times, by the way. The CL is 9 a.m. to 2:30 p.m. and I'll just give you a quick reason why, because one of the things you'll learn about me if you decide to. Uh, come to the trading zone and further your education, there's always a reason why. Right? I never just give you information and uh, not tell you why. Um, and the reason why um, we use the day session and not a 24-hour chart is one of the critical elements behind market profile is can we differentiate, and I explained this on one of the first slides, the relevant versus the irrelevant data. Relevant in trading means a lot of activity. Irrelevant means low activity. So if we know by definition that the overnight session in the S&Ps has less than 5% of the daily volume, why would we include it? We would actually be diluting the power of market profile by voluntarily introducing irrelevant data. Right? So we don't want to include it. Um, Uh, there's no volume on FX, so how would market profile be plotted? Market profile can use also what they call the TPO method, Tom. On the indicator, you'll see there's two methods of doing it. One is called TPO, time price opportunity. The other one is a, is a uh, volume based. So for Forex, you would need to use the TPO method. And that there's some intricacies and some discussions we can have understanding the difference between the volume and the TPO method. 
Um, you know, it's a bit beyond this conversation, <clears throat> but um, you know, they work equally as well. My experience has been the TPO method works better. But again, that's that's a much more advanced conversation that we can have uh, at a later date. I'll just continue to walk you through the slides here. Here's an example of using a prior level. You can see how I just extended this level out from over here, right? We've extended the level out from over here, and you can see um, almost with, with great uh, certainty that this was the trade of the day, the spot. And as I mentioned, you'll see over and over again that the big and important moves of the day are almost always um, based on a market profile level. The link doesn't work. Yeah, I think some people have already signed up. Try again. Can it be added to? Uh, M uh, I believe so. I'm not an I'm not an MT um, I'm not an MT user, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. But market profile either already exists inside your your trading platform. It's just a matter of configuring it properly, or there's a number of third parties who will sell you um, a, a copy. Did my did the website go down? <laughs> Let let's see. I think the I think the uh, I think the website is still. Uh, I don't know if I can open up another browser. It's good. It does. It's cool. It does good. All good. Okay. Well, copy it down and um, thank you. Um, Copy it down and, and save it in a. In a uh, uh, yeah, the, the the one that I'm showing you is an indicator that we built uh, for Ninja Trader. That uh, our Ninja Traders use. Our 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 members are are basically I'd say 50 to 60 percent Sierra Infinity Chart users, mo mostly through Infinity Brokerage, and. Um, about 30 to 40 percent Ninja Trader users, and the balance kind of scattered between TradeStation, you know, eSignal, Thinkorswim, and uh, there's market profile indicators for just about all of them. Um, you know, if you fill out the, uh, if you fill out the, um, if you go to that Trading Pump page, we'll give you, uh, we'll give you more information on that. There's also another video that you could watch. So again, you'll see over and over again, big trade of the day, and I'm not suggesting. Thank you, Morgan. I'm not suggesting that uh, there weren't other trades. I'm just showing you the ones that happen over and over again, specifically at these levels. And like I said, the patterns are so clear and obvious, there are no other indicators on the chart, right? It's just a matter of understanding the concept behind market profile. Is this market trying to expand, build value? Is this market trying to retreat back into value? Is this market trying to lose value by trading below it? Those are things that you're going to internalize and understand, and that's it, right? You don't have to you don't have to load up 30 and 40 different indicators. It's going to tell you, and it's not only going to tell you, but it's going to give you quantifiably the levels at which that activity is likely to happen. And lastly, I'll say again, the big moves of the day almost always happen. Oh, well, I have the today. I guess this was from a, a seminar I did on December 10th. The big moves almost always happen right off of, of the value value areas. And you'll see that happening day after day. Every day, no, of course not. Markets are not that precise. But most days, the big trade of the day will launch off of a known market profile area. Because market profile distinguishes um, the relevant irrelevant data, right? It's not it's not forecasting. It's using it's using known information and, and spitting that back out to you. It's using market generating information. It's saying this is where something happened. This is where it's likely to occur again in the future. For that reason, it works on any market. Any market that's generating data that can be measured, um, you can use market profile on. So you want to trade the mini S and P's, the NQ, gold, you know, bonds, notes, the agriculturals, whatever. Uh, you know, this this indicator has been used for for decades successfully on just about every market. So what are the key benefits? Number one, it's different from other indicators, right? Because it gives you that, that primary
long, short, or range bound. So it gives you an indication of the structure of the market before you even get going. It's easy to learn. I showed you how, you know, coming off of the, of the prior presentation, you can overcomplicate it, or I've shown you how you can overlay it onto a chart manageable. Works in any market. Whatever you want to trade, it works in. It clearly identifies those trading levels. So the, your, your entries become objective and accurate. You have those levels waiting for you before the market even begins. Um, you can use those levels as entry spots and also as destinations for the market. And importantly, also, it keeps you in the trade for all those big moves. Like I said, most of the big moves on a day are going to happen off of a trading one of those levels. And most critical thing is that because there's a, a limited number of um, because there's a limited number of known profile structures, it brings an additional level of accuracy and precision to your trading. It takes a lot of the guesswork out. You don't have to say, well, I'm below the trend line. Am I going to move back up to it? Am I down below it? No, market profile is going to give you that de determination. It's going to say this falls into the following structure. This is a structure that is you know, uh, neutral, looking to break out, or structurally short, looking to retrace the value. It's a known, known and quantifiable. That's one of, the, one, of the, one of the beauties of it. All right, so does it sound easy? I showed you a lot of beautiful looking charts. I tried to make it as easy as I could. And I'll say that learning market profile is not difficult. But I'll now go back to what I mentioned on slide number three. Learning the mechanics is not why traders fail or succeed. Traders will fail because of their inability to manage risk. And that comes from the psychology of trading. That comes from trading outside of your comfort zone, not having a trading plan, not knowing how many contracts to put in, not knowing how to manage the trade. That's where the failure comes from. So the mechanics of trading, as I've shown you, can be learned very easily. You have to bridge that. right? You have to find a coach, a mentor, a team, a community that will help you <coughs> work towards applying the mechanics in a way that works for you consistently over time. And oops, that, my friends, is the end of today's presentation.